For the first minute, we need to start with a hook that grips the viewer and holds them in their seat. So let's begin with a simple, stubborn truth that every builder, homesteader and history enthusiast knows all too well. Wood is a living material, even after the tree has fallen. It breathes, absorbs, swells and eventually decays. Today we throw chemical sealants at the problem. We drown beams in petroleum-based products, paint over everything and hope for the best. Yet medieval builders, people without synthetic preservatives, laboratories or industrial coatings, constructed timber structures that survived centuries of wind, rain and rot. Some medieval timber frames still stand today with their original beams intact, and that raises a question that modern engineering doesn't like to confront. How did they stop decay without tar, without varnish, and without any modern sealant whatsoever? The answer isn't magic, and it isn't brute strength. It's engineering, subtle, ingenious, and far ahead of its time. Now, let's go straight into the real substance of the method these builders used, because honestly, the deeper you go, the more you realize they weren't simply building houses. They were, in fact, designing entire moisture control systems long before that language even existed. At the heart of their approach was an understanding that wood does not rot because it gets wet. Wood rots because it stays wet. Medieval engineers put their focus on drainage airflow and strategic placement. They didn't try to seal moisture out. Instead, they tried to ensure moisture could never stay in. One of the most powerful techniques they relied on was elevating structural timbers off the ground. Instead of burying posts directly into soil, a mistake that, well, even modern DIY builders make, they rested their beams on stone plinths or sockets. Stone doesn't rot, and more importantly, it doesn't wick moisture into wood the way soil does. This single choice immediately extended the lifespan of a timber by decades. Now, to understand just how effective this technique was, well, the best example comes from those medieval barns scattered across Europe. Some of these buildings, you know, are well over 600 years old, and remarkably, their sills are still in excellent condition. The builders back then would often place horizontal beams right on top of rounded stones. Sometimes they'd shape them, but other times they'd simply use naturally smooth river boulders. This clever approach allowed the beam to sit above ground level, while also creating a handy pocket of airflow beneath it. Even during those heavy rains, the base of the structure would dry out quickly. And honestly, for anyone building a shed, a chicken coop, or even a simple firewood structure today, this method still works just as well. All you really need is a series of flat stones or concrete blocks. Nothing too fancy. Just raise the timber off the earth and, importantly, make sure air can pass underneath. No chemicals required, and it's as simple as that. But medieval engineers didn't stop at separating wood from the soil. They also designed roofs, walls and joints to shed water like armour. In many medieval constructions, every joint was deliberately shaped so that water moved away from stress points, not toward them. Carpenters angled shoulders, bevels and mortise openings in ways that modern observers sometimes mistake for decorative touches. In reality, these angles served a practical purpose. 
They encouraged runoff. Rainwater could not pool in the joints, which meant fungi had no place to start breaking the timber down. This level of precision wasn't random. It was a systematic design principle. Modern builders replicating this today only need a chisel and a bit of patience. Cutting even a small angle or slope into exposed joints can dramatically improve the longevity of exterior wood. Another layer of medieval preservation came from the surfaces themselves. Instead of slathering paint onto beams, craftsmen worked with tools that compressed and hardened the outer layer of the wood. When used correctly, it crushes the surface fibres slightly, creating a dense outer shell that sheds water more effectively than sawn lumber. This is why medieval beams often look faceted or scalloped. Those marks aren't crude or unfinished. They are functional. There is another method medieval builders use that is rarely discussed, but incredibly effective sacrificial layers. Instead of sealing their main structural timber, they protected it with materials that could decay first. This might be a layer of wattle, bark, or even wooden cladding placed on the weather-facing side of a wall. As the outer skin took damage from sun and rain, the inner structural beam remained untouched. This technique is still used today in high-end timber framing under the term rain screening, but medieval engineers were practicing it centuries before it had a name. Finally, ventilation was their silent weapon. Medieval structures especially barns, halls and outbuildings, were designed to breathe. Large open eaves, gaps between boards, vented gables and high ridge lines created constant airflow. Moisture never lingered long enough to settle into the wood. Medieval engineers weren't guessing. They understood materials intimately, and they designed structures that cooperated with nature instead of fighting it. And that is why their solutions still work today. If you're building anything out of wood, whether it's a homestead cabin, a backyard shelter, or a simple tool shed, these principles can extend the life of your structure for decades. For more deep dives into historical engineering and forgotten survival knowledge, make sure you subscribe to Echoes of Valor. Share this video with fellow enthusiasts and support the channel so we can keep uncovering the brilliance our ancestors left behind.